Now, do you find it any ironic in any way that I'm standing here on a college campus talking about why dropping out of college may be a really good idea? It's really not, because education is changing faster than institutions can. The deal used to be that if you went to college, gave up four years of your life, hundreds of thousands of dollars in tuition, debt, and foregone earnings, you'd be set for life with a cushy job and handsome salary. I can tell you that that is no longer the case. Richard Aram, a researcher at NYU, found that 36% of college students, after four years of college, showed no improvement at all in critical thinking, complex reasoning, or writing. In the US, over 70.1% of high school students go to college, and a college degree has become the new high school diploma. Too often, college promotes conformity, competition, and theory, rather than skills like innovation, collaboration, and application that are requisite for success in the 21st century. If college were teaching the skills required for success in our global entrepreneurial economy, 22.4% of college graduates under 25 wouldn't be unemployed, and another 22% wouldn't be working in jobs that don't require a college degree. When we take on astronomical debt, in the US it's an average of $34,000 per student. Yes, the average college graduate has $34,000 in debt. We're stuck into a very narrow track, forcing to find a job until we pay off that debt. We're mortgaging away our freedom to innovate, create, and change the world in exchange for letters after our name. Contrary to what you might think, I'm really not interested in burning books or raising classrooms or doing away with college as we know it. I simply want to change the notion that going to college is the only path to success. And I want to empower everybody, whether you're in the classroom or in academia or outside of it completely, with the skills, tools, and aptitudes necessary to pursue your passion and change the world, irrespective of the letters after your name. If you want to be a doctor, going to medical school is probably a wise choice. I really can't say that I recommend keeping cadavers in your garage. That might be taking the do-it-yourself approach a little bit too far. But at the same time, for non-licensed professions, going to college may no longer be a good investment. Since 1980, college tuition has risen 350% at about twice the rate of inflation and continues to rise. For the first time in 2010, student loan debt in the US outpaced credit card debt, which of course in the, our American capitalist society is huge, and is on track to top $1 trillion by the end of 2011. We're facing a bubble that will be as bad, if not worse, than the housing bubble crash in 2008, because in the US, student loan debt is unforgivable in the case of bankruptcy. What happens when students begin defaulting on their loans? The bank can repossess your house, but they can't repossess your education. Higher education may live in a, an ivory tower of BA, but I think it really lives in a glass castle of BS. And when that glass castle shatters, how we think of education will never be the same. Formal schooling, including college, was set up to train workers for the Industrial Revolution. And isn't producing the skills like creativity that are required for people to forge their own paths. Many of the problems I've outlined that I see with college, I think reflect a cultural shift from college being a vehicle for learning to the rite of passage to adulthood. We don't go to college knowing exactly what we want to do in life or knowing exactly what we want to major in. We go to college because our peers are going, our parents went, or because society expects it. I know, I followed this logic myself and went to college for eight months. But when we 18-year-olds and 19-year-olds and 20-year-olds embolden ourselves and behave in this manner, we become consumers. We expect certain things from college. We're no longer interested in the intellectual journey, but we're interested in the piece of paper the degree, the credential that comes after it. This attitude and mindset has led to schools investing more in lavish student residences and nice sports centers than in hiring professors, books, and academics. I left college two months ago because the opportunity cost of going to class was too high. 
there were too many places to be, too many lines of code to write, and too many phone calls to make. But for me, leaving college really wasn't that big of a deal because I left, I left school in sixth grade. Primary school for me came and went. I learned little from daily dittos. The thing I did learn was how to cope with a rotten environment, which I will say is a very useful skill if you plan on working in a cubicle from nine to five every day for the rest of your life. But I wanted more for my life. While my peers sat in class, I became an unschooler, the self-directed form of homeschooler. I took my education beyond the classroom and started businesses, worked on political campaigns, found mentors, worked at a Silicon Valley startup, and more, all before the age of 18, before I went to college. What unschooling taught me was the skills, abilities, and aptitudes that are really necessary to thrive in today's global entrepreneurial economy. Now, while I was at school, and I went to a small private liberal arts college in Arkansas called Hendricks, my friends told me, oh, Dale, you're just frustrated because you went to the wrong college. You should have gone to Stanford or Dartmouth or Princeton or one of those big brand name schools that would have offered everything. And during my fall semester, I believed that, that line of logic. And then I met my friend Rebecca Goldman. When I met Rebecca in January, she had, she had stopped out of Dartmouth to work at a startup in Silicon Valley called likealittle.com. And when I met her in January, we found that we had precisely the same challenges with our college experiences. We observed the same gap between theory and practice, saw peers that were infatuated by the degree at the end rather than actually by the joy of learning. And we stayed up literally all night talking about how we could change higher education. And we eventually discovered that, in fact, we had both been unschooled. We'd gone through high school without ever having setting, setting foot in a physical high school and came to the conclusion that because Dartmouth and Hendricks were such different institutions, that the root of our frustrations was the common experience we shared, not due to problems with the institutions. As unschoolers, we actively hacked our education. We weren't limited by the authority of institutions or by the walls of the classroom. We put together all types of learning styles, from mentorship to college classes, to learning from peers, to learning in groups, to learning by ourselves, to learning from materials online, into a cohesive educational program. And we ensured that we met the same learning outcomes, learned the same things, as anybody who would have graduated from a tr traditional high school. Why is it then that education has come to mean 16 years of sitting in school, behind a desk, listening to a teacher lecture? I'm happy to admit that school teaches valuable lessons. How to follow directions, how to work in groups, how to meet deadlines. All valuable things if you ever plan on, say, interacting with anybody else during the course of your life. Now, if you want to pull up Henry David Thoreau and buy yourself a cabin by a pond in Massachusetts, be my guest. You can skip school altogether. But school isn't teaching the creativity, innovation, networking, passion, motivation, initiative, and hustle that are required to succeed irrespective of the letters after your name. Close your eyes and imagine for a second when you were back in your first lecture class, surrounded by 500 of your closest friends, peering down at the professor through your binoculars. Imagine if the millions of my fellow 18 to 22 year olds who are currently sitting in class, copying their professor's words verbatim off the blackboard, instead went out and started doing, creating, and ideating in the real world. Imagine if they started their own initiatives, their own causes, their own projects, their own companies. Imagine the human talent that's currently squandered in school that could be applied productively in the real world. My goal isn't to take down the academy. I think institutions serve a very valuable purpose. But I think they're going to come to evolve. And more importantly, I think that if we enabled people to learn from life, instead of confining them to boxy educational paradigms and handing them a number two pencil every time they asked a, a contrarian question, go back and fill in that next bubble spot on the multiple choice question, we could enable people to have the power and the vision to realize their dreams and change the world. Now, this is only possible because for the first time in decades, 
cracks are appearing in the ironclad assumption that success in life is synonymous with education in a formal accredited institution. People have told me all the time that I'm not Mark Zuckerberg, so I, so I should have stayed in college. And obviously that's true, I'm not Mark. My hair isn't curly enough. But more importantly, I don't wish, nor do I need to be Mark. That, what people who, who take that, that point of view are, oper are operating on an antiquated assumption that there are only three paths in life. One, get a college degree and obtain a middle class job. Two, achieve a wild success as an outlier. Or three, relegate yourself to a life of asking, would you like fries with that? Welcome to door number four. You can be a productive member of today's society and earn a handsome income as a college dropout without necessarily achieving world domination. <laughs> I think that we are the disruptive generation that's truly creating Daniel Pink's free agent economy. Yet the skills, abilities, and aptitudes that are required to forge our own paths aren't being taught in college. And as Malcolm Gladwell showed in Outliers, beyond a basic level of academic or intellectual intelligence, increased IQ scores or grades bear little correlation to real world success. If you want to succeed in today's global environment, you must take your education beyond the classroom and learn the things like initiative, motivation, networking, drive, and hustle that will propel you to success. I know far too many people who think, plan, and dream, but never do anything. There always has to be a first step. And the first step has to start by doing. I would love to see people who have great ideas, the people I met in college, be empowered to realize their dreams. 50% of the world's population is under 30. And if you want to stand out from the other 3.35 billion young people, you have to differentiate yourself. It's no longer acceptable to sit in the classroom, listen to your teachers, take the tests, get good grades, and get a diploma. That's not going to get you a job. People like to tell me that I'm the 1% of the population that can succeed without a college degree. And that's not true at all. I believe that we're all the 1%. We all learn best in different ways. I didn't start out with any special connections. My parents aren't rich. I'm not a genius. And I didn't graduate from college when I was 14. The only thing that sets me apart from what you might call the average 19-year-old, which I will contest that there is no average, is the fact that I learned early on to live by the words of Mark Twain. And I have never let my schooling interfere with my education. <laughs> Some argue that we college dropouts, instead of changing the world, will instead sit in our parents' basements, playing Halo 2, doing jello shots, and smoking pot. I don't think so. I think the people who are going to be more interested in video games than the human condition are going to be in that location irrespective of whether they go to college or not. We, the youth who take our education beyond the classroom to learn from life, understand how our actions directly build a better world. We will change the world irrespective of the letters after our names. The next time you're sitting in class, staring at prefabricated PowerPoint slides with all 300 of your closest friends, much like you're doing right now, I challenge you to consider the opportunity cost in both time and money of what you're doing. Think prospectively. Look to the future. Consider, what else could you be doing? How many companies could you start? How many countries could you visit? How many lives could you improve? Thank you. Thank you.